right. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our webinar on process cooling. I uh, do want to make sure everyone can hear and see us. OK, so if a few of you would let me know right now in the chat box, if you can hear and see everything, I would appreciate that. So if anyone can give me a thumbs up, that'd be great. All right, looks like everyone can see and hear us OK. All right, so my name is Tim Upton, and I will be your host today. First, I'll start by introducing our speakers. Then we'll dive into our presentation, which will be about 20 minutes, and then we'll have a five to 10 minute question and answer session. So if you think of any questions during the presentation, please feel free to enter them into the chat box at any time. So now I'd like to introduce our speakers today, Matt Williamson and Phil Willey. Matt is the Director of Engineering at ADF Engineering and has over 30 years of process engineering and project management experience. As a leader at ADF, Matt guides a team of engineers on a variety of process development and improvement projects in the food, feed, <clears throat> bioscience, and consumer product industries. Phil has been with ADF Engineering for over nine years and has worked on multiple projects with tasks ranging from PFD and P and ID creation, process design, equipment sizing, equipment layout, mass and energy balances, and construction administration. His knowledge spans the food, corn milling, oil seeds, animal feed, and specialty chemical industries. So now with that, I will turn it over to Matt to start today's presentation. Thank you, Tim. Uh, so today uh, we'll be speaking about process cooling and the misinformation that, uh, that many individuals have regarding requirements for process cooling, those things that can limit your cooling capacity uh, and that can create problems, especially seasonally as uh, summers have been getting warmer and warmer and uh, warm summer is coming up and your cooling capacity will, uh, will often be constrained. Uh, so with that. All right, so summer is coming. That's like Matt say, that's the theme of this uh, presentation. Um, with summer, um, you get higher dry bulb temperatures, um, higher wet bulb temperatures, and obviously higher humidity. Um, the, the hotter your air gets, the more water it's able to hold. And so what you get is higher cooling tire water temperatures, as you all may have experienced. Um, cooling tires are a function of the wet bulb temperatures. So as the wet bulb temperature goes up, your cooling tower uh, supply water temperatures goes up. So um, you might experience chiller issues. Um, chillers are rated uh, nominally, usually. Um, air cooled chillers are uh, rated using 95 degree Fahrenheit air um, and a 50 degree Fahrenheit chilled water set point. And if you deviate from any of those, you might get a, a D rated chiller. So, um, you know, if the air temperature goes up above 95 degrees, um, you're going to get a D rated chiller. Um, if your temperature set point's 40 degree Fahrenheit, you're going to get a D rated chiller. So, so as summer's coming, um, again, higher temperatures, you might have individual heat exchanger issues. Um, you know, you might get loss of vacuum, on certain condensers, certain processes. Um, you'll get hotter room temperatures, uh, which isn't necessarily a, a process thing, but you know, it could affect your, your users, um, especially your operators. Um, so overall, you know, these hotter temperatures means that your plant cooling demand uh, may not be met. Thanks, Phil. One of the first things that uh, that you'll want to do if you are having difficulty meeting uh, your process cooling temperatures, uh, especially seasonally, is uh, don't jump to conclusions that you just need to add a cooling tower or so, uh, something to that effect. What you want to do first is you'll want to audit your cooling capacity at your facility. So you'll want uh, to bring an engineer uh to your facility to 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 walk that system down and it's not always clear what methods are most appropriate to meet particular cooling demands because one process may be completely different than another you may be impacted by your your geography where you're located and what the seasonal peaks, peak temperatures and peak humidity conditions can be. Uh, 
and what your what 